Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Fold. You must have seen those checkboxes which says I accept terms and condition and above that you might have a long paragraph of terms and condition. Honestly, nobody cares about it. Nobody reads it. People are going to click on that checkbox directly and hit the save or submit button. Then later on, designers came up with an idea which is going to force user to at least scroll through that terms and condition. So the idea was to make that I accept terms and condition checkbox uh, disabled by default and once user will scroll the terms and condition to its bottom only in that case that checkbox should be enabled honestly speaking the only terms and condition I care about it has to be on my job offer letter so guys uh, this is what is going to be in today's video in today's video I'll be creating a custom lightning web component which will be having of course that long paragraph of terms and condition and we'll be having that functionality there like the disable value of that I accept terms and condition checkbox is going to be true. I mean that is going to be disabled by default. And once user will stroll through that terms and condition and reaches its bottom, only in that case we will be making it enable. So let's start today's video guys. I'm Kapil, your host and you're watching Salesforce Fold. Alright guys, let's start today's video. Okay, so for today's video, uh, let me show you the output first, okay. So this is going to be output of that terms and condition and checkbox stuff. So if you'll notice, by default, this checkbox value is disabled. You won't be able to check it, okay. And if you will scroll down the terms and condition thing and when the scroll will reach its bottom then only this checkbox is going to enable okay so i'm just scrolling down now just to make it enable so let's suppose like once user will read through the terms and condition even though if it is on midway this will be disabled but when it will reach its bottom so the checkbox will be enabled so guys this is going to be today's demo and in this video i'll explain like how you can implement this functionality in your lightning web component okay so for that uh, I'm already having HTML part here which contains a paragraph assume it as a terms and condition paragraph by default like this is a, a lorem ipsum uh, text so this is a default text and underneath that I'm having a lightning input checkbox which says I accept terms and conditions okay and it is disabled by default and the value I'm maintaining the disabled value uh, from the JavaScript from the backend, which is true by default. So by default, this is true. And this is having a container also, which is a div container, then lightning card, and another container div, which uh, must be having the scroll bar. So guys, to make a container have its, have its scroll, so by default, see, this is not going to happen because like whenever the text will increase its height, the container is going to increase its height as well. So for that you have to limit container height. like you maybe add an inline style sheet or external style sheet so for that i have added a style sheet here which says scroll to enable css and here i'm having this style sheet uh, container style where i have uh, modified the height to be 350 pixels okay so the height this would be the maximum height and you can also set like what should happen on overflow whether you may set like auto like set it automatically manager automatically you can set like scroll you can set hidden so in our case uh, i have uh, set it up as a scroll because we need a scroll bar to read through that terms and condition okay so guys for terms and conditions and for that scroll bar we need basically window events like in window you must have seen like window dot scroll so using window dot scroll you can easily you know maintain this scroll thing in your HTML and JavaScript, but that is not going to work in lightning web component because in lightning web component We have a specific way to Maintain those event listeners. Okay, so first we will add an event listener and we are going to add that event listener on this Specific div. We are not adding it on the whole component. Okay, so for that we have to get this div using template dot query selector so that's why we'll be having it on uh render callback because once the element will render completely only after that we will be able to access it okay 
so here in the render callback we'll just do like this dot template dot query selector and in query selector we'll be having the id of that div so you can have the id like data id is equal to and let's copy the id so the id is container div container div okay so now we are having the div element here and now in the div element we will add add event listener okay and the event which we need here is scroll and on the scroll we have to call a function so let's say like this dot my function okay so this will add event listener the scroll event listener and whenever we will scroll that is going to call uh, my function okay now we will create my function so it goes like my function and okay so first we will again have that div element because we have to check the height of that element so we'll do div object this dot template dot query selector we will just copy the same thing from here okay so now we are having that div element in this div obj okay now if we will check the condition like if uh, div object dot scroll top equal equals to div object dot the height of the scroll minus div object dot uh, the we will be using client height here so basically benefit of using client height is it will also include padding like if you will not use client height maybe if you uh, go with offset height so there's another option i think it, it is offset height yes so if you go with offset height so the different would be like so here the scroll top is going to be a fixed value of that scroll so let's suppose like if the value is uh, the total value is 155 so the offset height will not include that 5px of padding okay so that's why you should always use this client height because it is going to include the padding i have tried that offset height as well and it was you know missing that 5px so here if it is like a end of the scroll then we will do this dot is disable false so this is just a like one time false like if you if you need something like when user scroll up again then make that checkbox uh, disabled again then you can just add simply a else condition here okay so that is going to make that checkbox unable and disabled based on the scroll position so this is going to be the javascript side okay now guys uh, there's another very important thing here so we have added the event listener but we have to remove it as well okay so to remove that event listener we will use disconnected callback so once the component get disconnected from the lightning page so we will do this dot template query selector and we will use this same thing okay and then it will be uh, remove event listener and the same thing here like the name of that event and the function name okay so that's how you can remove that event listener let me just update it and see like if it is working as expected okay so let's refresh this page okay no errors on the load so the default value of this button is disabled and when you will scroll to bottom it is enabled now yep so it is working as expected so that it is for today guys and i know like many of you are were asking these questions like how we can create this kind of functionality so this video is for you guys 
and also I'll be having complete code on my blog which is alfordpool.com so if you need the complete code snip so you can just directly go to my blog and the, just copy, feel free to you know copy and paste that code snip if you like today's video a uh, subscribe to the channel will be awesome I'll see you in the next one guys thanks for watching